Welcome back for another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Today's tip is on how to use the gradient map to adjust some uh, color effects when you are dealing with photo edits. And I've covered in other tutorials how to use this feature and what exactly it's doing, but just for quick reference, the gradient map applies colors directly to other values in your photo. So by applying it here, it's making all of my black values blue and making all of my white values still white. Um, and the reason that I like using it for uh, editing jobs is because a lot of times if you're faking things together, so for example, I'm going to fake this apple onto my desk. We'll just pretend that it's here. A lot of the reason that this doesn't look natural to people is that these have two very different lighting sources. They have two very different histograms. Um, and if we take a peek at the histogram of this uh, composition here, you can see that when everything's involved, you've got different spikes of green, red, and blue. But then when the apple's removed, you get a very different histogram. So even just the differencing, the differences in like light, how the light in my basement here when I took this terrible iPhone photo was very yellow. And the light when this was taken has kind of a bluish, um, more fluorescent hue to it. Those sites uh, or those types of differences can really trigger the human eye into feeling like this is fake or this is wrong. So a quick way to help fix that is to throw things like a gradient map over top of it. Um, and if you do things with the gradient map uh, where you're just straight up coloring it, like let's say I'm going to make a really dark shade here, just that sort of adjustment immediately unifies all of the black values all the way up through the white values in the photos, and that's going to make it look real. But if you didn't want this highly stylized of an effect, you can actually do a nice little trick with your screen and multiply layers here to unify them in a more subtle way. So what you do is just launch your gradient map and I'm going to say I just want to add some unified blues through all the shadows of both of these photos. I can just throw a gradient map on it, go in here, pick kind of a nice blue color. We'll leave it as this one so the effect is more pronounced and then just pull that halfway point way back and pull your white point way back so that you're really only affecting where these super dark values are in the photo. So as we can see, it's really only happening back here on the speaker and not really much on the Apple at all, which could be part of the reason this looks so off. But just for sake of the tutorial, we'll leave it like that. Hit OK. And then if you switch the layer mode on that to multiply, that lets the white values become transparent. So it goes more or less back to normal, but you can see that when we turn the layers on and off, all of the dark values in the photo now are picking up this hint of blue. And you can dial it in with different opacities depending on how severe you want it. Uh, but you can just continue to do this by adding more gradient maps and say, I want to add, uh, we'll add a little bit more blue, but maybe a different shade, kind of like a lighter, more steely blue and I want to add it more to the mid-range. So just think of this as your levels diagram. So black is down here, white is up here. Uh, and just say we want some blues kind of tucked right in that, that mid-range there. And you can always kind of see a live update of what's going on. So I'm going to say that's where I want some blues tucked into my photo. Say OK. Go back here, switch the layer mode to multiply. And now you can see it's punching in some blues in the middle there, which, albeit, is pretty unnatural here on this Apple. But again, um, feel free to dial that back. Or if you don't want to use that color once you've seen it in real life, pop back here. Maybe even sample a color from your original photo. And now what you're doing is taking values from one of the edited sources and pumping it into the other. Uh, and you can also do this with highlights. You just need to use black instead of white as your reference. So load up the gradient map, pop in here, switch this to pure black. That's RGB black of all zeros. This effect doesn't work quite the same in CMYK. Um, and then instead of white, maybe you grab uh, like a really faint yellow or something that you want kind of cast all through the highlights of your photo. Say OK. Push that point back to really dial it in however much you want. I'm going to say I only want to affect those. Say OK. And then instead of multiply, which all of the layer modes in this bucket affect the appearance of white, you want to pick screen, which is the opposite of multiply. 
um, and all of these affect the treatment of black. So by picking screen, all the black disappears, and now I just have kind of this unified yellow going through all of my highlights. Uh, and if you go through and do this sort of tweaking in a very subtle way to various aspects of your photo, you can see that by, woo, my mouse is freaking out. That was weird. All right, um, by doing that, if we turn them on and off, you can see how much more unified it is versus where it was. So if this is where it was and this is where it is, while that does still seem fake to us because they're two completely disparate photos, you can tell that the color aspect of it seeming fake is starting to go away. Um, and you can do this hundreds of times. You can do it one time. Um, usually a lot in my day to my day job, I end up having, uh, lots of different shoes overlaid on top of each other. Um, cause I work at a footwear company and usually just pumping a little bit of a unified blue like this layer into those shadows helps them seem all to be photographed together and then pumping a little bit of a highlight color that's unified across them all really helps merge them all together. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. Or if you want more of these types of tutorials, feel free to hop on over and subscribe. As always, if you have questions on any topics you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.